Good morning. What is going on, everybody? This is the Crypto YouTube channel, and today we are going to be talking about Sense Finance or Sense Protocol. Depends on what you want to call it. But I have covered a similar project in the past to this. This is in the same realm as it. Before we get started, guys, you can find them on Twitter at Sense Protocol or on their website, Sense.Finance. Disclaimer, as always, you can always know that I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is going to be financial advice. I'm sorry, I don't provide that and I'm not certified. I don't have the rules or the permission really to give you any form of financial advice. With that being said, though, hopefully this is pretty good educational content for you guys. And let's hop right into it. So since finance, it is a fixed income protocol, similar to something like Pendle, like Element, like Swivel. It is based on Ethereum and is utilizing yield bearing assets. So I've actually covered uh, things like Pendle, things like Swivel already. I, ha I haven't covered Element just yet, but they're all pretty similar. It's going to allow users, customers, whatever you want to call them, to manage the risk via fixed rates and their future yields. It's going to be scalable through a permissive design and it'll allow anyone to create a new future yield market. So the nice thing here, there is no debt. There's no liquidations due to there not being any collateral, but instead the protocol will allow for trading of the future yield tokens. So you're going to have a separate token that represents the future yield earning. It'll also give you the ability to choose these are either a fixed yield rate or to trade against your future yields. It's also going to utilize what they call a divider with segments and that in and of itself is going to deliver portions of the escrow to a set of tokens uh, through a set preset condition. Now the sense life cycle, as we can see here on the screen, you're going to have three stages, your issuance, your escrow and to maturity and then redemption issuance is where a user will set a maturity date and they'll actually be depositing tokens into since since will then actually mint tokens through the divider and transfer them accordingly as necessary their escrow until maturity is going to be for tokens that are received and can be held into their maturity or can be sold purchased or redeemed to burn their tokens and then redemption occurs at or after the maturity date. The next thing we're going to be looking at is kind of how it works. As we see here, tokens that are deposited into um, the protocol are going to be escrowed and will issue an arbitrary number of the tokens that are going to be represented in escrow. Each token will get a zero and a claim token, which are maturing assets. The zeros are going to be redeemable for one to one to the escrow's underlying assets at maturity date. So as time goes on, as you get closer to that maturity date, it will get to be closer to that one-to-one. -one. Claims deliver a yield that is going to be accrued on the underlying up until maturity and a value of assets are going to be determined by the actual market participants. So I hope that does make sense. A lot of this is dealing with a preset date and at that date is when everything matures. So who are the users of this or who can be using it? What are the kind of the uh, roles here? You can see there is a yield trader, LP, a saver, borrower, arbitrager, and a series actor. So the yield traders, those who try to predict the future interest rates and can purchase claims to go long or to purchase zeros to go short. LPs are people who are going to be holding the escrow tokens who want to be able to earn fees. So they issue the zero and the claims savers, or as the team calls them fixed rate farmers are those who want to earn a fixed rate over a set period of time so that they can buy zeros and hold them until maturity. Borrowers are the fixed rate borrowers have a loan on say any kind of a, let's just say compound, any protocol similar to compound, uh, maybe Aave, and they want to fix that interest so that they likely are going to buy claims to actually hedge borrowing rates. 
Arbitragers will mint, burn, and trade zeros and claims when the value drifts from one of the underlying assets. And then the series actors are actually incentivized to maintain the uh, escrow's term structure or the targets as the team calls the escrow, including a series sponsor, a settler, and a roller. Now, what exactly is a series, you might ask? Well, a series is a type of zero and claim, but they set a unique maturity date. Claims are showing the target before maturity and zeros are going to be redeeming for the target and note again, target being the kind of escrow after maturity. The protocol is going to utilize a scale value at the issuance and maturity, which is used with the contracts to settle this series. Now jumping kind of into their sponsors, their settlers, uh, actors that actually initialize these new series, they will be put up, uh, Pretty much they're going to deposit or put up a stable coin essentially a uh, stake that is going to be a part of the settlement reward and have exclusive access early to settle these series for a given period of time now after that given period of time it'll be brought up to the public where anybody can work with it settlers are also going to be those who can settle a series and harvest that reward and are incentivized by the settlement reward. So there is a little bit of play there to be able to earn a reward, but not guaranteed to happen. Now the rates for this protocol, you can see rates are up to 31% on stable coins, which is, I would say, argue pretty good. Uh, ETH actually over the past 30 days was at 13%, but that is going to be fluctuating. So keep that in mind. You may not always be able to get such a good rate on ETH, compared to what a normal staking rate would be. Now for the team, we are going to be looking at CEO Ken Prescott, CTO Joshua Levine. The person working with smart contracts is going to be Federico Martin A and Alex Gonzalez on the front end, not too bad. And their partner and investors, I think they have a really good list here. You're going to be looking at Rari Capital, Dragonfly Capital, Bain, Capital Ventures, Variant, Nascent, Collab and Currency, The Lao, and Rob VC. Now, let me note right now, there is no token yet, at least at the time of recording this, and that could change. So personally, I'm using the protocol. Uh, you know, when it's out, I'm going to mess with it, see, see what I can figure out there. So, I, you know, I'll use it just to mess with it, maybe get some good stablecoin interest rates. But I want to note right now, let's hop into my opinion on this protocol, because as we see in the market, Bitcoin is down. We had a rough week going on. So I hope you guys are OK. And this is why I personally think a protocol like this can be beneficial for people to at least be aware of and have in their toolbox of options to use. Something like this, where you can go and earn a good interest rate on your stable coins, especially if you are taking profits off the top, or you're taking capital off the top and you don't necessarily want to be at as much risk. Now, of course, you're going to be exposed to smart contract risk, uh, the general protocol risk. But beyond that, you aren't going to be directly exposed, you know, and it's going to depend on what you're trying to earn on and everything else. But if you are in stable coins, you're not going to be directly exposed to a price drop on most assets unless that stable coin depegs and for whatever reason, pretty much goes down to zero, which we it's happened to Algo stables. But, you know, if you're on a more trusted stable coin, I would say UST, USDC, I don't particularly like Tether, but if you wanted to use Tether, know the risks associated with Tether. And you can go from there. So am I going to be using the protocol? Yeah. Yeah, I will be. Uh, why buy the token? I don't know just yet. Dependent on the utility, the tokenomics, how it looks, I might, I might not. We'll have to see. But I do like it. I, I, things like this are good for the general market, the DeFi sector. I think we, I'm glad we have a couple different projects here that are being involved in doing things like this. So let me know your thoughts down below and I'll catch you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.